So there you go. Now we're on lesson 14.2, and I want you to go ahead and start by writing the title, obviously, Constructing Geometric Sequences, and then I want you to go ahead and write your essential question. How do you write a geometric sequence? Okay? And again, if the first section was everything, uh, had every had everything to do with what the common ratio is and what the next term is. Now, over here in section two, they want you to be able to create a formula, okay? So yeah, we see a pattern. Can you come out with a formula for that, right? Okay. So then over here, it just asks you to understand some things and they explain to you the difference between a recursive and an explicit rule. Okay. So then, I don't know what I should make you copy, but here you go. There are two things, okay, that you have to know. First, you have to understand that there's an explicit rule, and then there's a recursive rule, okay? To find, for an explicit rule, all you need to know is which number, like which number comes, and then you plug in that number, and then you'll be able to figure it out. For example, if I have a sequence, like say, I have one on the board, so I'm gonna use the same one, seven, 14, 28, 56, 112, dot, dot, dot. Okay, here's the difference between the explicit and the recursive rule. With the explicit rule, if I wanted to find, say, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let's say I wanted to find the fifth term. I don't have to start from the very beginning. As long as I have an explicit rule, I just have to plug in 5 into the x, okay, and I'll be able to get 112 right away. And that's what an explicit rule is. With a recursive rule, it's a little bit different though, okay? With a re recursive rule, we're just basically saying, hey, this is the common ratio. So you know what? You have to start from the very first number. And so with the recursive rule, they always tell you what the first number is. And then, starting from that point on, you have to keep multiplying by two to get to the fifth number. So if you are using a recursive rule and you wanna find the fifth number, what you have to do is you have to start from the very beginning, from the beginning, okay? And they tell you what the first number is. You put that down, and then you multiply by two, one, two, three, four times in order to get your fifth number, okay? So that is the difference between recursive and an explicit rule, okay? Recursive rule, you start from the beginning. To get to answer. Wow, this is like a really bad definition, but I hope you understand it. I want you to understand that when I write something down for you, I'm not using like the terms that would usually be in a textbook. You know that, right? I write it in terms that when you read it, you'll be able to understand it, okay? An explicit rule, you can go to the term right away. Oops, go to term right away. So I hope you understood the difference between the two rules. Okay? Thumbs up if you understand it. Okay, good. Okay, guys. Can I move on? So now, that is all you have to know for this section. This is yesterday's lesson, actually, right? So then let's go straight to your homework, which is the your turn question, okay? And so what it says is, I'm going to make it bigger for you so you can see. It says, enter a recursive rule and an explicit rule for each geometric sequence, okay? And so we talked about this table before. I said, do not be scared. When you see a table, that just means what? Nine is the first number. 
18 is the second number. 36 is the third number. 72 is the fourth number, right? So it's kind of like this 9, comma 18, comma 36, comma 72, comma 144. It's the exact same thing. A recursive rule for the sequence is, and what did I say about the recursive rule, guys? Do you remember? You have to start from where? Yes! You have to start from the beginning, okay? So you always have to say what the very first number is in a recursive rule. So what is the very first number? F of 1 means the very first number. If I want to find the third number, I'm going to put, what is the third number? What is F of 3? And F of 3 would be what? 36, but that is not what the question is asking me. I'm just doing this for no reason because I want you to understand f of 1. f of 1 means what is the first number? So tell me, what is the first number in this sequence, guys? 9. So there you go. First, you have to say f of 1 is 9, okay, for the recursive rule. And then you got to say, what do we have to keep multiplying after we first find the first number? Yes. We have to multiply by 2 every single time. So what are we going to put? F of n is going to be 2 times. 2 times what, guys? What is 9? F of 1. Okay, so f of 1 is 1 less than f of 2, isn't it? Right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? F of 2 is 18, right? This is f of 1. f of 1 is 9. And f of 2 is 18. Do you get that? So how did I get 18? By multiplying 2 to the 9. And what is 9? f of 1. So what did I multiply 2 to? I multiplied 2 to f of 1. Now, how do I get f of 1 if I'm going to use f of 2? Um, yes. Take away exactly. 9 from f of, oh wait, 18. You take away 1? Yes. You're taking away 1 from 2, right? You get that? To get f of 2, which is f of n, right? So we're pretending this n is 2 right now, okay? We have to multiply 2 to the number before that. And so how did I get f of 1? By going f of n minus 1. You get that? f of n minus 1 is always the previous number. So here's the recursive rule. The first number is 9, and then after that, f of n is equal to 2 times the previous number. And so when do we do that? We have to always include this. And we start doing this, multiplying 2 to the previous number, starting with what? Starting with the second number. That's why we say n is equal to or greater than 2. Okay? So now let's go to the explicit rule. Explicit rule is so easy. I didn't look in the textbook on the previous page to see if they gave you the formula right away or not. But here's my... Very easy way, all written out, of memorizing the formula. I think I actually wrote it on the board over there under explicit formula when I was trying to explain it to some students. Okay, so here's the formula. You start off with f of n is equal to, and then you're going to come up with the first number. Okay? And usually in your textbook, it doesn't say first number. It just says a. Okay? And then the next number you're going to put is the common ratio. And usually in the... Textbook, the formula thing, it just says B. Okay? So you put in the common ratio, and then after that, you're going to raise it to the power of N minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and explain to you why the formula is this way, but first let's get the answer. Okay? So the explicit rule, what did I say an explicit rule was? It is a rule where you can do what? You can just find out which number. I want to find the 12th number that comes in the sequence. I don't have to start from the beginning. All I have to do is plug in 12 into the n, and I'll be able to get my 12th number right away. And that's what an explicit rule is. I don't have to start from the beginning, okay? So f of n is equal to the first number, which is what? Ready? Go. 9. So 9 times. What is my common ratio? Ready? Go. 2, because we have to multiply by 2 every single time. And then I'm going to put n minus 1. N minus 1 is an exponent, so make sure you write it small and on top. And now we are done. Isn't that easy? So now you might be like, Miss Troy, why is the explicit rule like that? I don't get it. 
right? So what well, let's think about it. Well, the first number is 9, okay? And then 18, I had to multiply it by 2. So it's kind of like this. Let me change colors because I'm getting a headache seeing all this red. Okay, so my first number is a 9. But what was my second number? It was 9 times 2 because my common ratio is 2. What was my third number? Well, I had to multiply 2 to 18, right? So that's 9 times 2, which is this. I had to multiply the 2 again. Ooh, do you remember this kind of soda from last semester? And then what was my fourth number? My fourth number is 72. How did I get that? Well, I had to multiply 2 to what? The 36. This is 36, right? So I'm going to put 9 times 2 times 2 because that's 36. But I have to multiply another 2 right there. Okay? So then what is my fifth number? How many 2s am I going to multiply now? Yeah, you already see the pattern, right? So there you go. Using this, we came up with the explicit rule, which is what? Every time you want to find the number, the first number is 9, so you put that. And after that, you're going to multiply every 2 every single time. But how many times are you going to multiply 2? n minus 1 times. Because see, this is n, right? So if you want to find the second number, how many times are you multiplying the 2? One time. So it's one less than two. If you're looking for the third term, how many times are you multiplying the two? Two times. Yeah, that's one less than three. If you're trying to look for the fourth term, how many times are you multiplying the two? One less than four times, which is three times. If you want to find the fifth number, you have to multiply the two four times, which is one less than five. That's why we have n raised to the n minus one power. Because it's one less than the n that you have to multiply the 2 to the 9, which is the very beginning number. Okay? Ooh, this explanation is really important because chances of you forgetting the formula is really high. But if you understand this, you'll be able to figure it out. Okay? Thumbs up if you get it, class. All right. So we are done, and I'm going to move on. Very important right here. Um, last semester, my math two students learned this, right? And so it's kind of important that you get it. So you guys are like a step ahead. So now we're going to do the same thing. Yay, we're almost done. So then over here, you know, is asking you to find the recursive and an explicit rule, okay? And they made it all complicated like this, but let's not even think about it, okay? Let's just think about this part right here. Now, I don't know if I can do this correctly, but let me try, okay? Okay, so there you go. This is all I can do. I can't make it any bigger. Hopefully this would be good enough. So you have to use the geometric sequence to help find a recursive and an explicit rule. And it's the same thing as the other one. It's just that it's not in a table anymore. So basically the pattern over here is 5, 10, 20, 40, and 80. Okay? So we already know the first number. So for the explicit rule, it's so easy. Okay? Because remember what we were supposed to do? We we're just supposed to say f of n is equal to, and what is the first number, guys? 5. And then what is the common ratio? What number do we have to keep multiplying to get to the next? 2. So what do I put as the exponent? n minus 1, and we are done. Right? Now let's find the recursive rule. So the first thing you have to do for the recursive rule, you got to find the first number, right? So f of 1 is equal to what? What's the first number? 5. 5. And then you have to say f of n is, you have to keep multiplying 2 to the previous number. And when do you do this? When n is equal to or greater than 2. That was too easy. We are done. So yesterday, I gave you a question on the board. 
and it kind of looked a little bit scary. I want to go ahead and explain that to you because that's a test question that I'm going to give you next week. Unfortunately, oh, we have enough time. Oh, we don't have enough time. So I'm going to finish my lesson here, but I want you to know that the question that I gave you on the board yesterday is going to be on the test. So what I'm going to do is until the bell rings, I'm going to try and show you that question and then I'm going to take attendance, okay?